something. Why don't you sign the Tree of the Shadow? Is? Let's give me that Tree of the Shadow, sorry. Now I'm putting the little cast shadows across. They draw the branch and find them above there, cast some shadows on it. Yeah, and then that really is all you have to do to make the tree, first of all, it gives it a round brush so the shadows are kind of curved like the tree. You know, I take your brush, put a few little uh, textural details you want to see, but you don't have to put too many of them. Now, I'll show you something kind of neat. So this, so the, the big white tree, we actually, it's, it's a light enough shade that you paint a shadow on it, okay? You're putting a dark shadow on a lighter shade. The opposite is, what about this little guy over here, which is real dark? So it's too dark to paint a shadow on it. So instead of painting the shadow, we're going to lift the light. It's a reverse of the process. Mm -hmm. So let me get a clean up here. This is, a, this is just a number four round. It's damp. Clean water on it. So here, these little areas like this, which are actually the light hitting the tree on this one, we're just lifting some little areas on here like this. Just lifting some color. And then blot it. And you start seeing these little areas of light kind of hitting the side of that tree. So the trees you have that are way back in the woods, on those, in fact, I'm going to use a different brush. Let's use the, uh, let's use this half inch flat, it'll be a little easier. It looks like light coming to the trees hitting, within the woods hitting that tree. I could even do it on this little, this middle tree. This is not that dark, but I can still, if I want to, I can lift off a little bit of light hitting in a few places. Look how much light that gives us shapes. This one right here, is, this is all smudged. We just do these little quick doodles. But just to give you an example, let's have some light hitting inside this tree. I'm just taking a damn brush. Now this has to be dry. I'm just lifting off a little, I'm just loosening the pigment and blotting it. Now this is the kind of stuff I do towards the end of a painting. A lot of times I'll look at it, so I need to put a little, a little suggestion of light or something. And you can really, really give this thing some dynamics. But what I want to show you right now is, see these areas back in here, these little areas between these trees? Mm -hmm. I want you to watch what happens when we make that real dark. I'm using violet and green blue. Watch how I can put another tree right back. You see a spot in there? Right in there? There's going to be another tree right there. I'm using a small brush. Goes around that little branch right there. So I just created a whole new tree back there. It's a little bitty guy. And if I were working on a serious painting right now, lots of these little, these little trees kind of peeking out of the background. And a lot of times you haven't got to paint the whole tree, just a, just a little suggestion of a, of a thing. If you look at those trees out there, you see branches going like this. You may not see the whole branch, you see the little dark holes between them. That's all we're trying to do right here. We're just trying to create the little dark areas between the branches. And look how much depth and dimension that just gave that little painting. By putting those little things in there. Now you got this little dark areas going way back in the wood. You see suggestion of more trees. You got sunlight hitting trees. It's just a beautiful effect. It's, it's a really fantastic way to take a painting and give it some, some punch. Normally I would leave this tree white. I glaze it just to show you how to glaze, but this normally would be a white tree. So you have a nice sharp white edge here with that dark next to it. And the contrast is what makes it dynamic. That's why I say you, you don't want to, if you put your work in a co-op or an art show or a gallery, the last thing in the world you want is for your work to blend in. You want your work to stand out. You leave some pretty white paper, Put a strong dark next to it with some interesting colors and shapes, and your painting's going to stand out. Doesn't matter what you paint, it's going to, it's going to stand out from everybody else's. Because a lot of people, first of all, don't leave the white paper, and most watercolors would consider that a dark. Well, that's not a dark; it's a midtone. And just to prove it, I'm going to put a dark next to it, and you'll see just how light that really is. Let's have a tree right here. That midtone just became a tree. Doesn't look quite so dark now, does it? Yeah. So that what we thought was dark before, now we realize that's, that really wasn't that dark. There was lots of room to come in with an even darker color and create a new shape. Now we're going one level further back in the woods. Mm -hmm.
It took me a long when time to get that it. far, then you just don't feather it out. You just leave the edge. Yeah, you just use the edge, and I, and I could even, uh, if I want to really push it, and a lot of times I do this just to illustrate, I'm going to make this uh, another tree right here. I'm bringing it right up to this one. Now watch that area I lift out the light right there. Watch how bright that looks and I put a dark next to it. Mm -hmm. Now look how much dimension this little painting has, painting has now. See now it's got some real punch. See this other little background shape. Now that's a dark right there. But even that area looked dark a while ago. That looks like a like a mid-tone, which actually it was a mid-tone, but just it took a dark to bring it out. So you start getting these very, very uh, very deep applications of color. You can just go as far back in the woods. I've done pieces where I've gone six or seven layers of trees back in the woods. And it's like it's light on the edge of the woods, and the further back you go, it's getting more and more dark as you walk back. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's, a, it's a beautiful effect. I didn't invent any of this stuff. I learned it. But it's, uh, it's, it's the kind of thing, that once you learn it, it just really it totally changes the way you paint. And it changes it for the better. Mm -hmm. So that's what you do with the big guy. Establish where your light is. Leave one side of the tree light, like it's light hitting it. The other side, you want to put a little shadow on it. Bring a few branches, uh, shadows of branches. A lot of branches way up here you don't see, but they're casting shadows down this tree. Make sure the branches have a little curve to them. Don't just, don't just make a straight line. That tree curves around like this. It makes the tree look very round. Now if I can show you all something real quick, I'm going to show you how to, how to isolate something in a painting to paint.